and together with Tom Rathbone, we're giving Pastor Sylvie a Christmas break. Our theme for this Sunday as we approach the new year is New Beginnings. This has been a year of new beginnings as we have all struggled to figure out how to reinvent ourselves in the face of the COVID-19 epidemic. Churches have also had to reinvent themselves. Pastor Rick Warren recently said, COVID revealed a fundamental weakness in the church. Most churches only have one purpose, worship. And if you take worship away, you've got nothing. But, he said, his church is built not on one purpose, but five. You take one circle out, we've still got four other circles. We've got ministry going on, we've got mission going on, we've got fellowship going on, we've got discipleship going on. Those all stand on their own. Here at Milford, thanks to all the dedicated work by the volunteers in our church that Terry describes so nicely at the end of the Christmas Eve service, our church also has more than one vital circle. This morning, and in the coming weeks and months, let us use this time of new beginnings to continue to reinvent ourselves and our church. Show us your vision for how to be an energetic ministry and mission to our world a world which is desperately in need of what the good news of Jesus Christ has to offer. This is a day of new beginnings.
vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciple. The word of the Lord. Richard Avery and Donald Marsh have written a number of songs whose words I find are very special. So today, our special music from them reminds us that God is here today, even when we least expect Him. It is sung by Rob Cole from Hamilton College, who is also the director of the Catskill Choral Society that Janet and I have sung in. I found it in an online post-Easter service at his church, but it is also very appropriate to the Christmas and New Year season. When you least expect him, he'll be there. Long ago he caught us unaware. Who would have thought, who could have predicted that God would have acted in quite such a way? Strange as it was, he sent us a savior. He was there. of deep and dark despair. Try to believe out of death and sorrow God can make tomorrow a bright happy day. Search through the dark then perhaps you'll see that he is there. Light he Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Today we'll be celebrating the traditional Methodist covenant renewal service, or in this case, a service for new beginnings in the new year. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, please be with us as we celebrate new beginnings in our renewal for the year 2021. Please bless your church here in Milford. Help us to seek your will for us. Please grant us the wisdom that comes only from you. In thy holy name we pray, amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes. In some translations, gardener is referred to as vine dresser, a very important concept in biblical agriculture and a very apt comparison. Jesus refers to himself in I am's in the New Testament seven times, particularly in the book of John. I am the gate, or in some cases, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And for today, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. We're all branches, brothers and sisters in Christ, from the true vine of Jesus Christ. God is our gardener. God is our master vine dresser. And what is the vine dresser's goal? But for the vine, for the plant, to bear good fruit. Jesus used a lot of agricultural references, which translate in many cases fairly well from biblical times to modern times. I think maybe we could identify with this analogy here in upstate New York with our gardens and maybe some fruit trees. Maybe not with grapevines, but maybe with our garden as we thin radishes and carrots and pruning roses and especially pruning fruit trees, in particular apple trees for this area. So why do we prune? Now, we'll list off agricultural reasons which we'll try to translate into spiritual pruning comparisons. Pruning is done to let sunlight in. Excessive branches and leaves keep sunlight out and contribute to the growth of mold and fungus. So we want the light of Jesus Christ into our tree, onto our trees and vines to fight spiritual fungus. Jesus is the light. We prune to let fresh air circulate through a vine or tree. This also fights spiritual mold. The Holy Spirit is sometimes referred to as the breath of heaven. We remove what is dead or dying from a tree. We move unproductive, even counterproductive branches away from the tree that drain away our spirit, even causing it rot. Pruning is done to prevent a plant from going wild. And a wild plant fruit produces poor fruit. Pruning is done to create more space around the tree, even access to the tree. Pruning is done to shape the tree or vine into a good shape to protect it in times of storm providing good structure. Pruning is done to keep unproductive branches from sprouting out in all different types of unproductive directions. We prune to have a single leader in a tree and not branch off leaders. And that leader in our life is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometimes, Pruning is done to prepare a tree or plant for transplanting, which we might be able to compare in our, in our own lives. But, above all, pruning is done to produce good fruit. Sometimes this might seem counterproductive at first, 
Why cut off branches which might bear some kind of fruit, but that fruit might be small or maybe even rotten? Jesus has another example on this topic in the New Testament with the fig tree. The fig tree was a beautiful tree. It had many leaves, but it bore no fruit. So in order to bear fruit, we must be pruned. And in order to be pruned, we must have faith and we must rely on prayer, as Jesus tells us. Jesus is the true vine that we are branches of and the source of our fruit. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 16, you will know them by their fruit. So what exactly is spiritual fruit? There are lots of examples, but let's zero in on Paul's letter to the Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Maybe to produce more love, God might prune out our resentment. Maybe to produce more joy, God might prune out our self-pity. Maybe to produce peace, God might prune out disorder in our lives. Maybe to produce patience, God might help us to prune out ingratitude. Maybe to produce goodness, God might prune out bitterness. Maybe to produce faithfulness, God might prune out doubt. Maybe to produce gentleness, God might prune out unkindness. Maybe to produce self-control, God might prune out our quick temper. Today we're celebrating our spiritual New Year and a traditional Methodist New Year's service of renewal. Now, New Year's is different as most holidays go. It's actually two halves. There's New Year's Eve, which we won't get into, and there's New Year's Day, which prepares us for January, a time or season of reflection, January. Now, Lowell and I have different points of view on January. I've always thought January was like dark and cold in the dark ages. Lola has embraced January, embraced these times as a time of reflection. She says she does this because she doesn't have to go anywhere, but this might also be true for some of us. Once again, I think she's right about this one. So what is the proper time for pruning? I guess it depends on what plant you're talking about, but most expert, experts would agree, at least in the case of certain fruit trees, it's best to pr prune them in late winter when the true tree is dormant during the short days and just before the sap begins to run. So in a way, we're approaching the season of pruning, a season of reflection in the days of January. We could probably come up with a sermon on New Year's resolutions, but I'd like to talk a little bit about New Year's resolutions and how they might tie in. They're usually a lot of the same stuff from year to year. Exercise more, lose weight, stop smoking, get organized, clean out, a relatively new and less screen time. Now, New Year's resolutions are well intended but difficult to keep. They don't work because they're self-pruning. They could be shallow or superficial or focused on our bodies and not so much on our souls. Back in the 70s and maybe the early 80s, we used to attend a, a friends and family New Year's Eve party. 
which one of the staples of this event was at about 11.45, all the smokers would go out in the backyard and very solemnly smoke their last cigarette for the year, if not the last cigarette of their life. And they would throw the cigarette butt down on the ground and rub it in and then go in to face the new year. About 12.45, everybody started to go out into the back yard again and light up. This is just an example of, of human nature. An example of self-pruning and not pruning through prayer with God. And just look around at the country during this pandemic. Look at here, you'll see a bunch of people cutting their own hair. Not very well. Not very effectively. As the hairdresser stands back and takes a look at the, the client's hair and how it grows and develops a plan or strategy. The vine dresser has a plan or strategy for each plant. God is the master vine dresser. We call upon God through faith and prayer. God wants us to bear fruit. Jesus said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to bear the fruit God wants us to bear, we must be pruned by God. Unproductive parts like bad habits need to go. Counterproductive parts like sin need to go. Just plain dead wood not unlike what the Pharisees and Sadducees clung to, needs to go. Sometimes we can't see this ourselves. That's where the master vine dresser, the master gardener, comes in. Unproductive parts lead to unproductive behavior. Counterproductive parts leads to sin. Dead wood equals no life flowing through the branch. All of this leads to no fruit. You can just tell if a tree or vine or an orchard or a vineyard is happy or not. Imagine a well-tended or well-ordered vineyard. It has a sense of order and care. We need to trust the process of God's spiritual pruning. Proverbs 16.9 says that we make our plans with the Lord determines our step. Spiritual pruning may be unpleasant. It may even hurt a bit. It is not punishment. Pruning allows for new and better growth. And it must be regular. We have hope. The confident knowing that through God we will bear a harvest of good spiritual fruit. We're ending a new year of new beginnings. Jesus, call, Jesus calls upon us to pray and have faith for God to prune us, to let light into our souls, to get rid of our dead wood, spoiled fruit, and broken branches, to let fresh air in our lives so we don't develop the mold and fungus that pruning helps to avoid. We ask God to shape us, to provide structure, to help us with maybe even some guide wires, to get rid of those leaders which divert us from the true leader of our tree, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we need to be pruned to give balance to our trees so that we may bear good fruit. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, you created us. You care for us. You want us to bear good fruit. Like vines and trees, we grow stuff that doesn't belong there. So we ask you to prune us so we can be healthy and continue to grow in you. While pruning may not be pleasant for us, help us to accept it for what it is. Your love. Your loving and tender care. And what is best for us. 
Help us to remember that you are there for us and you want for us what is best. And so we place ourselves into your care that we may bear good fruit. In thy holy name we pray. Amen. Dear God, you are so awesome and beyond our ability to comprehend. But we try with words like Father and Mother and Love. How marvelous that you created us in your own image at the dawn of time, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Why do we find it sometimes hard to see your image in those around us, even in ourselves sometimes? How grateful we are to you for giving us your son Jesus, the Christmas child, so that we might have a real life of example, a real life example of what it means to be truly human. Make us, as individuals and as a church, open to your vision and to your pruning so that we might bear an abundance of good fruit. Jesus, you are here on earth as one of us. What a challenge your life of universal love and caring presents to us as we try to live our lives today in your image. In this broken world, you came to heal. Help us to take time to really learn about you, the true vine, the good news, so that we may become fruitful branches, continuing your mission of bringing healing to all those in need. The COVID epidemic has shown a bright light on many of those needs, which we may not have fully seen before, or which we may have even tried to ignore. Your example shows us that you always responded to those in need of love and care, let us covenant together to also respond. Holy Spirit, when we least expect you, you are here. Jesus only lived on the earth for a short time, but you are here now in our lives each and every day. You are the presence in our daily lives that Jesus promised to us. You gently but strongly stir us from placidness and call us to make bold new decisions on how to be your heart your hands, and your feet in the world about us today. You then give us the wisdom and strength to follow through on those decisions, especially when we work together. There is strength in numbers and in mutual care and concern. We take turns supporting each other. At times we are strong and reach out. At other times when we are feeling weak, we gratefully accept others' loving, supporting love. Let us now pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The words of the closing hymn were written to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the United Nations. They capture in words and music the call given to us to grow into God's image. The benediction song, written by our music director when Sandy and I lived in California, is then a prayer for us to be the light of his love that image of God for others.
is love Shine forever in you Let the hope that he brings Spring eternal in you And let the light of his love Shine forever in you Let the light of his love Forever shine And you shall be as a beacon Shall know.